Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 27th, 2022, could on 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a hurricane threat in the Caribbean. You need to keep your eye on the weather out there, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we have two areas of concern right now. First of all, a tropical disturbance that is located several hundred miles to the east and northeast of the Bahamas. This system has a 40% chance of going on to become a tropical cyclone over the next couple of days. And a system also located down there in the Caribbean now with a 50% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone over the next several days as this system generally tries to move westward. In the southwestern Atlantic Basin, we notice that we do have this tropical disturbance that we are monitoring. However, we notice that it's not really well organized. There's no discernible area of circulation trying to form at this moment in time. And I think that's still probably going to be a fair bit away as the favorable conditions have not aligned itself underneath this particular system yet. And so it's going to take time for this to develop and thus the chances of development within the five day period have actually been lowered from 50% down to 40%. If you look at the GFS forecast, the 300 millibar wind and the 10 meter wind here, we notice that right now the reason why the system is not expected to do much is because of the shear that it's going to be facing over the next several days. Most model forecasts like this one have this system located in a pocket of shear and that's not really expected to change. However, at least temporarily in the short to medium range, that shear vector will align with the storm's northward movement and allow for some additional development of the system potentially within the next two to four days. However, after that point, a cold front slides south, we get an upper level disturbance to impede on our system. And that's when the shear begins to increase once again and not allow for any substantial development. And thus the system begins to weaken. Now the same type of story can also be said out here in the Caribbean as well. We do have a tropical disturbance trying to become better organized. However, we also notice in this particular instance that again, there's no lowering of the sea level pressures and there's no real spiraling in of those wind fields. And what this means is that our system is still probably a few days away from undergoing any significant genesis. However, the wind shear in this particular area isn't going to be all that unfavorable after the next about two to three days. And that is when I think more substantial development could occur, but still some isolated thunderstorms for portions of Puerto Rico and the northern coast of South America. And we can look at that here in the 850 millibar vorticity and 300 millibar wind product off of the GFS forecast. We notice that within a few days, the system tries to get itself better organized as it heads off towards the north and west. And although there will be initially some shear around from a tropical upper trosopheric trough that you can see right here in the beginning of the loop sliding through, that begins to depart and the wind shear actually begins to decrease in a pretty significant manner across this area. And so what that's going to do is allow our system to become vertically aligned and that's when the intensification process can occur. And we see on this particular run of the GFS, this does go on to become a hurricane as it passes very close to Jamaica. When we talk about impacts specifically for portions of Haiti, the Dominican Republic and Jamaica, we notice the system organizing sliding westward. And we do get a system that tries to become a tropical cyclone and even a hurricane as it very nears Jamaica. We can see here on some of the forecast guidance, GFS uh, wind gusts, that we do have wind gusts that are approaching and exceeding hurricane force uh, by the time we get within about 150 hours. So this could become a tropical cyclone worth monitoring for portions of the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, and Jamaica. But of course, it is too early to determine specific impacts for those areas. If we take a look here at the 300 millibar heights off of the GFS forecast, we notice that we will have several troughs moving into the U.S. over the next several weeks. And we notice that towards the end of the frame, you can kind of see some of the reflection in the upper levels from that tropical cyclone here in Jamaica. Now, there's a lot of unknowns in terms of the future track forecast of this particular system, assuming it goes on to develop. Now this trough obviously moving into the Midwestern US will play a big role in where this system ends up going. 
But of course, if this interacts with the mountains of Jamaica, that's going to disrupt the circulation, make it weaker, that's going to have effects. So there's a lot of unknowns in terms of where this is going to go. So the bottom line is it's kind of a wait and see game to see where the system ends up forming in the first place, assuming one does, and then we'll have a better understanding of the track forecast thereafter. And if we take a look here at the United States weather today, we notice that the cold front has now slipped all the way south in through portions of the Florida Peninsula today. Much cooler air in the wake behind this cold front. Temperatures across most of the central U.S. now slipping into the 40s and 30s to start off the morning. And that is likely to be the case for the next several days. We got our next weather front shaping up across portions of the Colorado Rockies right now that will be sliding eastward over the next several days providing more threats for potential severe weather and winter weather across portions of the U.S. and across portions of Florida. Well, those temperatures are going to be falling over the next several days as that cold front moves southward and brings down some cooler air. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll touch you guys again some more tomorrow.